Hello, hello, hello. Today I'm going to be diving into dopamine because I hear the word dopamine used so much out and about and I think it's lost its way a little bit. G'day, it's a Sunday and on Sundays now I try and not go on any social media and the reason that I do this is I think it just gives me a bit of a chance to reflect and a bit of a time to have slower thinking and not be so reactive and in that space of like comparing and all of that so I have been doing this now for a few weeks and I find it very enjoyable but am I detoxing from dopamine that is the question I want to answer a dopamine detox is where you're meant to avoid anything arousing to the brain for a set period of time this probably counts as arousing to be honest on the list there's like obviously avoiding social media there is avoiding listening to music um and avoiding engaging in activities that are pleasurable but my question is can you actually detox your brain of dopamine I think I know the answer to this one, but I need to dig into the science. Yeah, I think the answer pretty much is, is going to be no, big spoiler alert. But what I want to do is get into the details a bit of like what dopamine actually is. Let's redefine dopamine because the phrase dopamine detox was never meant to be about actually like reducing the levels of dopamine. It was just a catchy title that the psychiatrist who came up with it thought oh people will remember that so i think now dopamine has become almost like a villain and it's like oh we don't want too much dopamine dopamine isn't a drug i think that's something that has been definitely misconstrued that dopamine itself is addictive that you can be a dopamine addict dopamine is not this pleasure chemical dopamine is a motivator that is one of the main purposes of dopamine it is to reinforce certain behaviors dopamine is a neurotransmitter which is where brain cells release different chemicals and these chemicals interact with other brain cells and alter their activity the way dopamine changes brain cell activity is to interact with very specific receptors that are sat on other brain cells and there are two types of these receptors so dopamine receptors can either increase brain cell activity or decrease brain cell activity. So dopamine has this modulatory role in the brain and dependent on what receptors are sat on the cell that dopamine interacts with, that then influences what dopamine actually does to that cell. It's not simply like this pleasure chemical that whenever it's released, you're gonna feel like good. There are two main pockets in the brain where dopamine neurons are held. So dopamine isn't found all over the brain. There are only certain brain cells that actually make dopamine to begin with. One of these pockets is an area of the brain called the Substantia Niagara Pars Compacta. Gorgeous name, really, really catchy. This brain area is in a circuit called the basal ganglia, which is vital in initiating movement. It's like the green light and red light for if you should perform of movement or not, the go and the stop. So when dopamine is released from the substantia niagara, that is allowing movement to be initiated. Green light. The other region where we have dopamine cells is called the ventral tegmental area or the VTA. This is the part where we are concerned more with reward because the VTA signals to an area called the nucleus accumbens. This is called the mesolimbic reward pathway. And when dopamine is released in this area of the brain, that is what is capturing something which is potentially rewarding for us. The dopamine that is released in this area can help to change the brain cell activity of other cells in the brain to help us remember what led to that reward. It's essentially putting a value on something that is in the environment. Both of these functions of dopamine are absolutely essential just for living life. And if you lose dopamine in this substantia nigra pars compacta part of the brain, that is what leads to Parkinson's disease. So it can really impact movement. And then there are also animals that can be born without dopamine. And in these animals, they are born relatively like they look normal. So all the circuitry is there 
that is responsible for like letting dopamine out of the brain. But these animals do not feed themselves or they don't move themselves as well. So you completely lose drive when an animal doesn't have dopamine. And also dopamine is actually really important in aversion as well. So it's not just reward in this mesolimbic reward pathway. I mean, the clues in the name about reward, but the dopamine signaling in this pathway is also really important in avoiding negative things as well. There are lots of different neurons with different dopamine receptors on them. And it's thought that it's their firing patterns rather than the dopamine that is released that tells us whether we should be chasing something that's good for us or whether we should be completely avoiding it. What is rewarding is quite individual. It's dependent on association. There are obviously things which are more universal in terms of human reward. So if something is high calorie, high sugar, that can be rewarding because as humans, we need energy. So something with high calories will be rewarding to the brain because the brain is thinking that's energy that I need. But other things in the environment, to one person, they might be completely like enamored and rewarded by that. And for someone else, it might be completely neutral. So when it comes to social media, I think this element of reward in social media, there is that basic human desire for connection and the human desire to be accepted and liked, which can be very much fulfilled by likes, comments, follows, but not everyone will feel the same about that. It is very much the personal association that you tie up in your social media. If you have a social media account where you're just posting random videos from someone else, then maybe you won't have tied your identity up in that so much. But if you're a creator, who has made a business off social media, then those likes and comments might mean a lot more to you. So that can vary how rewarding social media actually is. In a really small study on teenagers, they were put in an MRI scanner and when they were in this scanner, they were shown pictures of a fake social media site. So it was made by the researchers and they all had to submit 40 images. So they were showed like 140, 48 images or something like that, 150 images. And theirs were included in there. And the researchers had assigned certain likes to their photos. And these likes were just done by the researchers, but the participants thought they were done by the other participants in the study. And it was shown that when the teenagers saw their photos with high numbers of likes, there was higher activity in the nucleus accumbens of the brain, hinting that they were being rewarded for these high number of likes. And in teenagers especially, it's thought that the reward pathway is overly sensitive, which makes sense because as a teenager, you're learning the societal rules to get by, to be successful, to be accepted, peer pressure, all of that. So it makes sense that the reward pathway is a little bit more sensitive to stimulation. But it does hint that social media, likes, comments, follows, all of those things, can be impacting our reward system. Our brain can be perceiving those things as rewarding. And that is when things like social media and social media use can become more habitual. It can be something that we just go towards doing because the brain has learned that that thing is good for us from this reward signaling. And I think this is where the dopamine detox type of title came from, is because dopamine is known to be involved in addiction. And this was found in the 1970s, studies in the 1970s showed that mice would self-stimulate themselves more when certain regions of the brain were in contact with the stimulation device. And those self-stimulating regions were the ones that had these dopamine neurons in them. And when you gave mice dopamine receptor blockers, so it stops dopamine activity from impacting the brain, then this self-stimulation stopped. And so this put dopamine at the center of addiction in general in the brain. And if you look in people's brains who are addicted to certain substances, it's been shown that the levels of certain dopamine receptors in this VTA nucleus accumbens pathway can be reduced. And this is thought to be down to something that is called tolerance, where when you have a drug, the more you take the drug, the more of that drug you need to get the same hit. It's thought dopamine receptors can actually decrease in their numbers, which means you need 
more and more dopamine to feel that same hit like you did before. The levels of dopamine we have in the brain and the levels of these dopamine receptors can also be influenced by our genes. And some individuals may naturally have more dopamine receptors or they might have dopamine receptors which are a bit more receptive to dopamine, receptors that are receptive. But if, for example, there is a change in a receptor that allows dopamine to cling on for a tiny bit longer, that means that the impact of dopamine will be greater on the brain cell activity because it's not thrown off the receptor as quickly. For example, there's natural variation in how addicted someone might get to a substance. And in mice, you see this variation as well. In the mice that are more likely to get addicted to cocaine in one experiment, they showed that these mice naturally just had a higher level of dopamine receptors in the nucleus accumbens, which means that they, when they take the drug, there will be a higher peak of dopamine signaling in this region, which means more reinforcement of you should take that drug again. Whatever led to this big reward, we should take that again. And that will be more likely to reinforce the behavior, which can then, with repetition, make it habitual. But what I think is important is that in addiction, although we put dopamine as this central mechanism, there are lots of other things that are happening in the brain as well. Lots of other neurochemicals that are involved. And when you block dopamine receptors in some studies, people can still feel the high of the drug. So dopamine isn't the only thing that is involved, which again, in the dopamine detox type of branding, it comes down to like dopamine is the one thing that we need to be wary of. And dopamine is the big bad wolf in terms of us being so dependent on things. So it's not just dopamine. And when something becomes habitual, the less likely dopamine is gonna be involved because dopamine is the motivator to do the action. So once the action is more rote in the brain, dopamine isn't really needed to make you motivated to do it because the brain has programmed in that response and that response and that pull and that craving is now so strong that you don't really need the dopamine to be like, oh, you should do that thing. It's like you're already just doing it without really thinking about it. So dopamine detox, AKA taking time away from pleasurable things or things which are overly stimulating or things which you just have a really rote response to. By taking time away from these activities, what that is doing is that when you get the craving to say, go on social media, like I still get that on a Sunday. I'm still like, on my phone, like looking for my apps where I've had them and I remove them off the home screen. It wakes me up almost from like just clicking on it and being like having a little scroll. And in that moment I go, oh, I'm doing that. And I can stop myself and then redirect and do something else instead. So I think it's more just breaking habitual loops rather than re reducing dopamine. There will still be dopamine release during the time I'm on a dopamine detox because I'm motivated throughout the day to do many different things and whether I follow through with them or not, that craving that comes from dopamine, it's very hard to just like stop that when I walk past a coffee shop. Dopamine might still be released in that instance to say go in and drive me to go in and get the cake. It's just whether I act on it or not. So it's not really detoxing from dopamine, it's just stopping yourself from following through with some of these actions. And is it good for me to do this like dopamine detox, what I'm calling my anti-social Sunday, is it good for me? I think it just depends on what your relationship is with the thing that you're spending a bit of time away from. If you know you're like eating loads and loads of sugar and you're just like, do you know what, I want a day where I'm not eating loads and loads of sugar because it makes me get a big sugar rush and then a crash later on, then yeah, that will be good for you because you won't be having that big crash. I know for me with social media, a lot of my identity can be tied up in that and I can fall into a bit of a rabbit hole with social media where I feel like, oh my God, that's me and that's what I'm sort of worth. And because I have that association and affiliation, it's good to take time away from it just to remind myself that that is not true and that is not real. Because if I'm on it all the time, then that does become a lot more of my reality. Okay, I'm gonna end the video there. Dopamine detox, essentially load of bollocks. And I am thinking that it's just good to assess my life, 
see what makes me feel good, what maybe makes me feel good in the moment, but crap later on and spend a bit more time trying to not do those things as much in a healthy, non all or nothing type of way. Okay, well, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to the old channel. And if you like videos about the brain, a bit more about things like this video, taking something that's in the media, in the news, breaking it down a little bit. Or if you like videos about productivity, chasing your goals, getting your goals, then yeah, subscribe because more of those videos, of course, will be coming your way. Uh, and that's it. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.